Have you ever wondered about the origins of the ancient kingdom of Nri, one of the oldest in West Africa? Let's embark on a journey to the roots of this powerful kingdom. In the heart of southeastern Nigeria, a powerful kingdom flourished from the 10th to the 19th centuries. This was the kingdom of Nri, a hub of cultural and religious influence, a beacon of trade and diplomacy. The tale of its founding is as intriguing as the kingdom itself, steeped in oral tradition that transcends time and space. Picture this, the protagonist of our story is Eri, the son of Gad. Now, Gad wasn't just anybody, he was one of the sons of the biblical Jacob, a figure of immense importance in the religious texts of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Eri, they say, was a man of great ambition and vision. His story is not just one of personal journey, but a migration that would change the course of history. Eri embarked on a journey from Israel, crossing vast lands and seas, carrying with him the seeds of a culture and a kingdom. His destination, the region we now know as Nigeria. Upon arrival he founded the town of Nri, a move that marked the inception of a kingdom that would later wield immense influence in the region. The story of Eri's migration is not just a tale of the founding of a town, it's the birth of the kingdom of Nri, an entity that would grow to hold sway over vast territories, shaping culture, spirituality and governance in ways that still resonate in the lives of the Igbo people. Eri's journey from Israel to Nigeria was a seed sown in fertile ground, sprouting a kingdom that would stand strong for centuries. This migration was a pivotal moment in history, a spark that ignited the flame of a powerful kingdom, shaping the course of events in a significant part of West Africa. Thus, the story of the kingdom of Enri began, rooted in a journey from Israel to Nigeria, marking the birth of a powerful kingdom that would leave a lasting impact on Igbo culture. At the heart of the kingdom of Enri was a figure of spiritual and political authority, the Ease Enri. The Ease Enri, a title that translates to the King of Enri, was a beacon of leadership, an embodiment of the kingdom's ethos, and a bridge between the divine and mortal realms. In the complex tapestry of the Enri kingdom's social, religious and political life, the Ease Enri was the central thread. He was the spiritual guide, the ruling sovereign, and the chief diplomat all rolled into one. He was seen as a divine figure, a mediator between the gods and humans, entrusted with the sacred duty of maintaining the delicate balance between these two worlds. The Ez Enri's role wasn't limited to spiritual matters, his influence extended to the political sphere as well, where he was tasked with the duty of maintaining peace and order. The kingdom thrived under his watchful eye, with disputes resolved, conflicts settled, and harmony preserved. He was the moral compass guiding the kingdom, ensuring that justice was always served and the principles of fairness and equity were upheld. But the Azenri's responsibilities weren't just limited to the kingdom's internal affairs. He was the face of the kingdom, representing Enri in negotiations, trade discussions, and diplomatic dealings. His wisdom and diplomatic acumen were instrumental in fostering relationships with neighboring kingdoms ensuring the prosperity and growth of Enri. However, despite his immense power and influence, the Ease Enri was not a tyrant. He ruled with a gentle hand, guided by the principles of fairness, justice and respect for all. His leadership style was a testament to the Enri Kingdom's core values, reflecting its commitment to peace, harmony and social justice. In essence, the Ease Enri was the heartbeat of the kingdom, the life force that kept it thriving and vibrant. His leadership shaped the kingdom's destiny, guiding it through challenges and leading it to unprecedented heights of prosperity and cultural richness. The Ease Enri was not just a leader, but a spiritual conduit, bridging the gap between the divine and the human, ensuring harmony within the kingdom. His legacy continues to echo through the annals of history, a testament to the grandeur and glory of the Kingdom of Enri. The Kingdom of Enri was unique in its social structure, particularly its Ozo title system. This ingenious system was a model of social stratification that was unlike any other of its time. It was not a system based on birthright or lineage, but rather on personal merit and achievement. It was a system that recognized and rewarded hard work, integrity, and personal accomplishment. The Ozo title system was open to all members of society, regardless of their social status. Whether you were a farmer, a trader, or a craftsman, you had the opportunity to rise in the social ranks through your own efforts. This system was a testament to the Kingdom of Nri's commitment to fairness and equality, and it played a crucial role in maintaining social harmony and cohesion. In essence, 
the Ozo title system was a shining example of social mobility, where the doors of opportunity were open based on merit, not birthright. The Kingdom of Enri was not just about politics and social structure, it was also about time. In the heart of this advanced society, the Igbo calendar was a cornerstone. This ingenious system, founded on lunar and solar cycles, was an essential tool for the Enri. The calendar's lunar aspect based on the moon's phases was divided into four market days, Eek, Ori, AFO, and Enquo. These days were the building blocks of the weeks, months, and the full year. The solar aspect on the other hand was used to determine the agricultural seasons, crucial for a society heavily reliant on farming. Religious activities too were guided by this calendar. Festivals, rituals and ceremonies were all carefully planned according to the lunar and solar cycles, ensuring harmony between the people's activities and the celestial bodies. The Igbo calendar, a remarkable innovation of the Kingdom of Enri, brought order to the seasons and rhythm to the life of its people. The Kingdom of Enri was not an island, it was a beacon of culture illuminating the entire Igbo society. Picture if you will, a web of influence with the Kingdom of Enri at its center reaching out to touch every corner of Igbo land. This influence was not just political, but profoundly cultural. The Enri people were the carriers of deep-rooted religious beliefs and practices that were woven into the fabric of daily life, not just in the kingdom, but throughout Igbo society. At the heart of this cultural influence was the Enri religion, a belief system that placed a strong emphasis on the sanctity of life and harmony with the natural world. This reverence for life was reflected in the kingdom's laws, which prohibited the shedding of blood, and in its religious rituals, which sought to maintain a balance between the human and spiritual realms. As the Enri people spread out and interacted with other communities, they carried these beliefs with them, shaping the religious landscape of Igbo society. But the influence of the kingdom of Enri didn't stop at religion. The Enri People also played a pivotal role in the evolution of the Igbo language and writing system. The kingdom served as a linguistic melting pot, where different dialects and scripts came together, and were refined into a more unified and sophisticated form. This linguistic innovation facilitated communication and trade among the Igbo people, strengthening their social and economic ties. The Inri influence on Igbo culture was so pervasive that it's impossible to talk about one without the other. From religion to language, from art to social norms, the Kingdom of Enri left its fingerprints on every aspect of Igbo life. It was a kingdom that didn't just rule over its people, but shaped them, molded them, and left a lasting legacy that continues to resonate in Igbo culture today. The Kingdom of Enri, a cultural powerhouse, left an indelible mark on the Igbo culture resonating through the ages. Peace was not merely a concept in the Kingdom of Enri, it was a way of life. The Enri People were known for their peacemaking and mediation skills, a trait deeply ingrained in their societal fabric. In the heart of the kingdom sat the Ease and Re, a figure of spiritual and political authority. But beyond these roles, the Ease and Re was a mediator, a beacon of peace in a sea of discord. He was often called upon to mediate disputes and settle conflicts not only within the kingdom, but also between different Igbo communities. It was not a role taken lightly, the Ease and Re was the embodiment of justice, and his decision was always final. The Kingdom of Enri was not just a physical place, but an idea, a philosophy that spread far and wide. This philosophy was deeply rooted in the principles of peace, justice, and equity. And it was these principles that the Enri people carried with them, spreading their influence and shaping the Igbo customary law. Customary law in Igbo society was not a rigid set of rules but a dynamic and evolving system that was constantly adapting to the needs of the people. It was based on the principles of peace, justice, and equity, principles that were deeply ingrained in the Enri people. The Enri people, with their innate peacemaking and mediation skills, played a key role in shaping this law, ensuring that it was fair, just, and equitable. The Enri people were not just peacemakers they were also teachers, they taught other Igbo communities the importance of peace, justice, and equity, influencing their beliefs, practices, and customs. Through their teachings, they were able to spread their influence, shaping the Igbo peace process and leaving a lasting impact on Igbo society. The Kingdom of Enri, a bastion of peace and justice, played a pivotal role in shaping the Igbo peace process, a legacy that continues to echo in the Igbo society today.